And the more the merrier to me. That's the kind of person I am. The more people go to heaven, the happier I am. Take them with you if you can. Take them with you. Pray for them. Maybe some people you can't you can't get close to them and touch them and be friends with them, but you can surely mention their name to Jesus. Jesus is on. Listen, Jesus is on the right hand side of God. On the left hand side of God is the law. On the right hand side of God is 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 Jesus sitting. Uh, and Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of God, and he's praying for certain people. If you believe he's praying for certain people, you're crazy. Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of God praying for everybody. He's praying for murderers. He's praying for rapists. He's praying for thieves. He's praying for you, me. He's praying for countries, different colors, different races, different kinds, different heights, different fat, uh, short, skinny, tall, black, white. He's praying for everybody. Why can't you? Jesus is our example. Why don't you do the same thing? Uh Uh-oh. Went off again. Amen. But it's true. The Sandblots and the Horonites and Tobiah were mad. And verse 11 says, wait, I'm coming up to what I wanted to tell you. So I came to Jerusalem and there and was there three days and I rose in the night and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what, m- what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me save, what well, you except, except the beast that I rode on. Uh, I like this part. I like verse 12. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 12. It tells you right there, there is going to be a time in your life where you're only going to be able to tell certain people, if any, about your vision. Everybody's not going to agree with your vision. Amen. He says, Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. It was between him and God. It was between Nehemiah and God. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my, my. Please get something out of that. You know, you tr- sometimes we trust people too much. We tell people things. And, you know, I believe this. I hope I say this right. I believe this. You could block your own blessings by running your mouth. Oh, yeah. You could block your own blessings by running your mouth. <laughs> so, watch them lips, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. My, my, my. Build your wall. You have instant favor. Use it. Don't worry about your sandblots and whore nights. They'll oppose you each and every time. You'll have your scorners. You'll have people who will laugh at you. When you start building something in your life, when you tell somebody, oh yeah, my wife or my husband, yeah, they cheated on me, but I still love them. I forgave them. I'm putting it in the past. Okay? Yeah, we went to the doctors and we got tested and checked out and we're clean. I'm going to start all over again with this relationship. Oh, my, my, people are going to make fun of you and laugh. They're going to call you a fool. But if you love them, you love them. Amen? Believe in your God and his promise. Believe in what God told you he was going to do in your life. My, my, my. Mm, mm, mm. Tell no one else of your plans. You know, I got a job one time at uh, Bell Atlantic. It was before they became Verizon. I got a job at Bell Atlantic. And I was making $20 an hour. And I, man, I was so happy to get $20 an hour. <laughs> I never had a job making that much money. Oh, it was so nice. And it was beautiful. I was customer representative, whatever they call it. And um, it was back, I think it was back in 2000. And um, I was so happy about having that job. Instead of being discreet about it and, and you know, going through the, the, the lessons and everything and learning about how to do my job and, and, and making money and taking care of my two kids and my house that I had at the time. Instead of being discreet about it and seeing that, making sure that my roots were, were firmly planted, I went out and told everybody. I told everybody. 
I said, man, you guys need to go to Verizon. Go to, I mean, go to Bell Atlantic. Man, they're paying $20 an hour, and I'm making good money, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. And I told everybody I called myself helping people. <laughs> okay? Remember that sometimes you can't help people. When God, sometimes God will give you something he doesn't want anybody else to have. Listen, God has a personal relationship. You have a personal relationship with God. And when God gives you something, he doesn't want everybody else to have it. He wants you to. Gee, oh, Lord, have mercy. Is that a word? God wants you to have it. If your boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife gives you a ring, a beautiful big ring, looks like a big rock, do you think they want you to go out and give it to the neighbor because it was so beautiful? No, they want you to have it. Why well, yeah, I told everybody about this job and, 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 and I was telling everybody all my business and showing people my pay, my pay stubs and everything. And guess what happened? After three months, I, it, it, it wasn't the real job. This is how silly I was at the time. It wasn't the real job. It was, it was uh, we were going through testing to see if we can keep the job. And guess what? The kid didn't do good on her tests. And guess what? They walked me to the door. Yeah, they did. The, the, the union representative walked me to the door. And I had to clean up my desk, and I walked to the door, and I got my keys out of my purse, and I got in my car. And I rode around and rode around. I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and got me some chicken and a drink. And I went up into the local park we're in, the, in the city, that I li the little town that I lived in. And I sat there, and things went through my mind that I know was the devil because I just thought about just ending it all. I messed up myself. Can't blame on God. And thanks to the grace of God and to his angels watching over me, I am still here. Amen. I am still here. Hallelujah. Amen. Wait on God's timing. He'll send you helpers. Look at If you read chapter 3 of Nehemiah, you'll see all kind of helpers came. There was goldsmiths and apothecaries and people that built the furnace. And there was, there was people who made the doors, the beams, the locks, the bars. There was even somebody there to make the toilet, the bathroom. Look at, if you look at Nehemiah chapter 3, look at verse 14. It says, but the dung gate repaired. See? Malchiah, the son of Rechab, the ruler of part, he built it. And set up the doors thereof, and locks thereof, and the bars thereof. God will even send you somebody to build the bathrooms in your life. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, wait on the Lord. And if you read, uh, here's another thing. Um, don't kick the doors down yourself. Allow God to do it. Your adversaries will try to ruin you, but set up spiritual watches. Now look in Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse 13, it says, Therefore sit I in the lower places behind the wall and on higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Amen. You have to set up watches, spiritual watches. Pray and ask God to send angels. Amen. Verse 16, uh, 15, 16, and 17. I'll read it. So then it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known to us and God had brought the counsel to naught. Then we see God brought them to nothing. It says, then we returned all of us to the wall, every one of us to our own work. And he came to pass and it came and it came to pass. And I'd show sure enough from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears and shields and bows and habergeons and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah they which built it on a wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it every one with one end of his hands wrought in the work and with one the other hand held a weapon so there's, when, you're, when you're building your vision in your, in your life, when you're building your vision, you're going to have to have your hand, one hand in the vision, doing the vision, and you're going to have to have the other hand holding the spear. Amen? Holding the weapon. So that means build with one side of your brain and with the other side of your brain, pray. I heard something interesting on, on uh, I can't remember what it was on TV. Um, they had a Catholic nun... A Buddha priest, and it's not a joke. <laughs> the Catholic nun, a Buddha priest, and a and a, a, a tongue-speaking Christian. Uh, and and they actually uh, 